A shape we never saw, a technique we don't know, a material we can't imagine, a discourse we don't recognize. And our response is, SciArc has a responsibility to interrogate what we think we know and to uncover what we don't yet know about architecture. The what we don't know includes a search for who we don't know. It's not a challenge to list architecture's well-known contributors. It's more difficult to find unusual architects before they become unusual architects. The as yet unknowns carry inside themselves an aspiration to move the discussion. These architects sense their own capacity, but others haven't, not yet. Tell us something we don't know yet, if you can. Draw for us something we don't yet know, if you can. Build for us something we don't yet know, if you can. Listen to the ideologues and the allegiance promoters. Their mandate warranties only reruns of redos. Look at the awards programs, media and publication, teaching, lecturing, exhibitions, and most of all, look at what's constructed. The process is largely self-congratulatory and self-perpetuating. What challenges the status quo makes the status quo uncomfortable. Why? If the odd stuff is legitimate and the even stuff is subject to suspicion, perhaps the even stuff isn't the whole story. Perhaps the even stuff isn't the story at all. Perhaps it never was. What is original has as yet no presence. It arrives on a professional field already fully occupied. Who are the occupiers of that field? The proponents of the established discourse. The in the know, form language, method, system, way of seeing, thinking, and feeling. A creed, a belief system, a world view. And the originals, unstable themselves, threaten to destabilize the established creed. <clears throat> I guarantee the comfortable will fight forever never to become uncomfortable. They'll cover the earth with concrete to fortify their case. But guess what? Inevitably, that concrete cracks, and out of the cracks come the messengers of a new architecture. Please welcome Florencia Pita and Jackie Bloom to SciArc. Thank you, Eric, for the introduction. Also, this is the first poster I'm making you um, when I started teaching here at SciArc, so it's quite relevant. Um, so uh, this is a unique <laughs> lecture for us. We wanted to thank Eric and Sayar for inviting us and you know, teach, lecturing at home is not an easy task. So we will try to do our best as we go through. So the title of our lecture is Color Forming with the hashtag. Um, as many of you know, hashtagging is a way to label images with unspaced phrases on social media sites. In the last few months, it was a way for us to visually curate and take stock of our work, not only for this lecture, but also in an ongoing way. And color forming is a term we've been using loosely to describe projects or moments in our projects where color and form are expressed as a simultaneous condition. Color form is not an actual dictionary defined word, but coincidentally, it is a toy where geometric shapes made of die cut vinyl come in primary colors. 
and can be stuck to a background board, allowing for endless arrangements by the user's imagination. It was invented in the 1950s and is still sold today. And although the co constructs remain two-dimensional, the combination of color and shapes in this toy produces synchronized visual compositions. Our work to date has primarily been an investigation on this synthesis of color, color and form. In our projects, the aim is to transcend personal tastes and color by coalescing form with color um, that is innate to the project and the process that produces it. This allows color to not only be an application to produce indexical and symbolic references, but to advance the notion of color as an attribute embedded with a physical form. In our hashtag color forming assessment, we see our color forming work as a series of mannerisms, imitative but transfigured, lurid, exaggerated, and aiming to produce an intricate level of architectural resolution. These mannerisms are identifiable in each project's differing and sometimes overlapping techniques and strategies to produce form and color. For most of our projects, form is generated from a process where two-dimensional figures and three-dimensional forms oscillate to the point where the source, whether 2D or 3D, is no longer recognizable. The result is somewhere in between a two and a half D instance in the process. We're interested in the feedback between two dimensional contours and three dimensional volumes where familiar shapes are rendered unrecognizable. Our interest in contemporary culture and art influence our attitude about form. On the left is a painting by Brian Donnelly who is otherwise known as Cause. He creates familiar character silhouettes and subverts their instantaneous legibility by overlaying multiple characters within the figure, painted with precision in bright colors. The center image is of Jeff Koons, his rabbit parade balloon, a soft version of his otherwise hard metal balloon sculptures, which challenges the notion of materiality. On the right is Aaron Curry's Big Pink, his work implies a three-dimensional form through his two-dimensional shapes. So as we are dis uh, displaying these two diagrams, kind of break down the idea of color, color form. So the color part of that diagram is that our take on color theory focuses primarily on the technological shift from color, from paint to print. On the left is Wolfgang von Goethe, color wheel from 1810, paired with Joseph Albert's homage to square, painting done in 1966. The basis of this color wheel is a traditional color theory that primary colors could be mixed to produce a range of in-between colors. Joseph Albert's work advances the traditional color theory. He studied complementary colors through painting and the interaction of nesting squares by looking at each color's intensity, temperature, and vanishing boundaries. And the Warhols embrace the color palettes of RGB and CMYK in the center images, which were created for output media such as television and computer monitors and for printing. In 1950s, Pantone developed a system to color match by giving each color a number and identity. Ryan McGuinness uh, uses Pantone color for their autonomy and range of, range of selection in order to produce painting and silk screen of multiplicity of colors. Our use of color is primarily in the current state that the color palette is in, which is made for output media and printing. This is a move away from the language of complementary colors as mere representations, and it favors the autonomy of color, or color as a ready-made. Unlike selecting a paint chip to apply color to a surface of a building, we are looking at modes of printing directly onto building materials. This is an ongoing research for us to examine printing to develop formal articulation with color, hence the term color forming. In a way, our work continues an investigation that started at Greg Lynn's office, right here, when Shaki and I worked together for several, several years. One relevant project is a project called the Ark of the World Museum in Costa Rica, where color and form were symbiotic. 
Jackie and I met at Greg's office in uh, 2001, and while Jackie continued on there through to 2010, com completing work on Bloom House, another project, I had left the, left the office and started teaching at SciArc and producing my own work as FP mode since 2005. So one of, my f one of the first installations uh, that I work on was this uh, project uh, called Pulse Tendril Formations. This is the first commission that I had, and it was given by uh, Eddie Cohen Moss here. Uh, it's, it's literally, as he mentioned in the introduction, it's, it was like coming into SciArc and being able to investigate uh, new ideas or breaking the, uh, from the cracks of a, a shell of concrete within, um, within this institution. In this early project, color is seen as an autonomous single entity. Vinyl is a readily available in Pantone colors. Solid color and thinness becomes its own materiality. Absolutely artificial construct of plastic and color, the accordion structure thickness thickens the materiality. In this project, color becomes immers immersive and material is fake. As you enter this gallery, the sense is that you are in an outdoor space. Reminiscence of a garden in Versailles, the geometrical, geometrically constrained plastic hedges create meandering path in this indoors outdoor space. The single architectural joint is the screw. 200 sheets of PETG were laminated with Pantone number 191C in vinyl. The planar quality of the PETG sheets is augmented to volume by means of the pinch, provided by the use of the screw, in order to reach up to eight feet. The pinch becomes the only structural joint. Figuration is extracted from the continuous corrugation of the plastic. Vinyl was used in excess from the floor to the forms. The next uh, installation was a uh, commission by um, the LAX Art Gallery in Culver City. Uh, the director uh, is Lori Fistenberg, and the, I, the idea was to create a proposal for the project room of that space. Similar to the Sire Gallery, here color is autonomous, but the material is mixed. To both vacuum form vinyl and cast urethane forms, Phantom 1505C is the selected color. The formal operation of going from photograph of flowers to delineated tracings to wire meshes in 3D implies a move from 2D to 3D. Two stages of formal manipulation. Delineation becomes a tool to extract familiar geometries from the found images of flowers. Once the form have been recreated individually, they are composed into a single entity, composition as opposed to an endless field. There's no literal, rep the name of the uh, exhibit, it was called Alice. There's no literal relationship between the installation and the original story by Lewis Carroll. It is indeed an aim to capture the sensibility and atmosphere that is present in the story and therefore intends to embed the space with it. The nature of the book plates brings upon an emphasis on two-dimensional forms. Here, tracing and contouring are the mechanisms for design. Uh, and here is a collection of examples. As they go from John Tenniel from 1865 to Arthur Rachman from 1907 to some of the depictions from Disney for uh, the movie Alice in Wonderland. The shallow 2D nature of the form is layered as a vertical wall. The regular repetition of the units is set against the irregular profiles of the back pieces. Uh, in, this, uh, in this wall, the, the corner uh, is, has a mirror form. This, sheet, this image shows the two-part system, the units and the back. The units have a clear reference to early floral traces. They are cast in orange urethane. The backs are figural yet abstract made out of solid CNC mill form with a cladding of vacuum form PTC and a liner of orange vinyl. The next project is another uh, installation. In this case, uh, it was a, uh, an exhibition uh, for 
the Chicago Art Institute, uh, curated by Joseph Rosa in 2010. Um, and it was mostly uh, a, a singular piece. This project expands the notion of color selection by engaging a palette of multiple color, but act always from the basis of color picking as opposed to color mixing. Since the wall had to be painted by hand, as you can see in the pictures, the method is paint by numbers. Each profile had a corresponding Pantone color as if, it's, if made of parts, a color forming exercise where form or color are one. By creating strong delineations and fake shadow, paint achieved the sense of three dimensionality. The name Cronopius originated from a character in the book's Stories of Cronopius and Fames from 1962 by Argentine writer Julio Cortázar. And here's just a few images that shows you how it was displayed at the museum. You enter through a really long corridor and arrive uh, at this wall. The Cronopius are described as unique characters. They are naive and conventional and sensitive creatures with lush imaginations. Cortázar the the, depicts them in short vignette proclamations that have an air of surrealist fairy fragments with stories such as introductions on how to climb a staircase and turtles and chronopios that chronicle exhilarating yet casual events. This installation presents a chronicle of short vignette drawings where the 2D graphic has an artificial depth created by exhausting the compelling attributes of extreme coloration, abstract figuration, and shallow materiality. The playful atmosphere of the drawings incites a sense of enchantment. As in fairy tales, enchantment, enchantment provokes a kind of illusion in a contriving atmosphere of fiction and fantasy. The graphicness of the drawing is excessively expended, a bias towards the drawing becoming highly picturesque, lavish, and of arresting beauty. The next project is a competition, uh, it's called Urban F Field, uh, in, uh, is, um, for an extension of Los Angeles Central Station. And the idea is that it starts to kind of build upon similar ideas about delineation and, and a kind of shallow 2D. In this case, uh, different than the Cronopius, the objects become buildings. The single units or the Cronopius, they actually become single building entities, creating a strong, contrast between figure and ground. The final projects of this uh, first sequence is another installation. Uh, in this case, it's uh, an, a, a kind of a collection of work presented for the UMA, the University of Michigan Museum of Art. Uh, his director is Joseph Rosa. Uh, this exhibition traveled also to LA, so it was here a few months ago. Uh, and the idea was to kind of build up a collection of works. This project moves from paint to print. In Cronopius, color becomes indexical to each form. Here, prints allows for color to expand and become more independent to form. Printing opens up new possibilities for form, pattern, coloration, and images. Digital patterns move directly to printing, to digital printing. Here the pattern is printed onto ceramic tiles. The process of fabrication starts by setting the grid tiles with grout, then the assembled piece is run through a printer. So instead of each tile having a, di a different pattern, all tiles receive an image print. The table has a combination of printed tiles and 2D contours that are CNC milled out of MDF and painted. Hand painted some of the objects that were presented in this table was a collection of multiple elements from different times uh, of the work developed at the office at that time. And it showed from uh, jewelry to um, product design pieces. Uh, and this example, um, the two models on the left, uh, the case of a flower, two flower vases at two different stages of the design process. <coughs> There's a back and forth from painting to printing in these models. Painted takes, it's, it's an applied mechanism on the form, it's a coding to the form, while the 3D printed color and pattern is embedded in the form. 
So the two stages in design, a very earlier model, which is a, it's a white 3D print painted, and the, the next is kind of advancing technology towards that. Uh, this is a, a drawing of a, the plan of that three tables combined into one. UMA table is a display of, of objects, a collection of objects with a catalog and co uh, that came along with the show. Instead of a series of pedestals, the tables serve as a support for the display of the different objects. It collects the work in a single formal narrative. Some of the objects range different moments of the work, from product design to jewelry, as I said, and the list of projects includes a series of studies for the production of a collection of a toddler tableware, a collection of jewelry, and the design of the flower vases. These are the photographs. The earlier photographs are the photographs taken at UMA, uh, and these are the photographs uh, taken here at SIARC once the, uh, when the ex exhibition was in display here. The, leg, the legs became an exploration about augmenting the depths of 2D lines. By means of extrusion, the line becomes mass. So while uh, Florencia was developing the UMA table, we were collaborating on this competition. Um, it's a competition for a harbor port building in Keelung, Taiwan, that was ultimately won by Neil Denari. And as our interest is in designing unfamiliar outlines, the columns in this project are a family of figures, which only refer to the site's nearby rock formations in their mass, but together are only identifiable in their differences. Our proposal was a porous space, five office towers, and 15 whimsical service columns, similar to the ones on the UMA table. The project is made up of 15 columns, a plinth, and office towers. Um, and the plinth houses the port terminal, garden, garden atrium, and commercial zones. And the columns would be the primary structural elements, but would also house circulation cores, mechanical units, and water closets. And straddled between the columns are the office towers. The large shaped columns anchor the plinth and towers to the ground while allowing for programmatic separation and flexibility. The glass skin of the office towers are made up of a dense structural mullion pattern which gradually changes in glass transparency so that during the day it would seem like a graphic image of clouds and in the evening, the figural columns would seem to emerge from the water. And um, to continue the sort of figural leg project, um, this is at a much different scale. Um, we were asked by LAX Art again to do sort of an IKEA hack. They gave us a $5 IKEA stool and asked us to use the stool as an armature for a design to be auctioned at their annual summer fundraising event. We reconfigured contours reminiscent of C and S shapes from Baroque period furniture to develop a set of outlines for the stool legs and seat. A graphic was designed that has the depth and texture of upholstery but then muddled with a graphic texture to allow the depth and flatness to play off each other. The flat CNC cut set sandwich, but also reveal the given armature. And the top of the seat sits asymmetrically um, on the cuts and the cutouts of the legs to reveal the IKEA stool. The upholstery graphic we created is printed directly onto the surface, allowing the color to seemingly be integral to the flat MDF panel. It is all printed on a conventional signage printer that can accommodate thickness and flat surfaces. Um, but this project is an ongoing research uh, towards advanced printing technologies that can be applied directly to exterior building surfaces. For us, it was essential for the stool to take on um, and artificial materiality. 
the next project um, is called Picture Park. It's a proposal for a public landscape in Chengdu, China. And the, at the end of this summer, uh, Chengdu had their first design expo where a selection of designers were asked to propose innovative, innovative designs for Chengdu's public facilities, such as subway vents, subway stations, trans bin, construction site fences, rest facilities, and landscape. The proposals were fabricated and put on display for the public and government officials to see. We have yet to see any fabricated images, but a proposal uh, is showing some of the renditions. The proposal is called Picture Park. It's a carpet of graphically printed color exterior tiles to be laid on an existing green space. It is made of uh, 60 by 60 centimeter squares of platform seating, floor tile, hedges, and grass. Horizontally, the hedges work as low walls and enclosures to an otherwise open landscape. We began by looking at the light emitting colors that come from the RGB palette. We also look at forms which overlay selected Pantone colors to produce depth and volume. And we arrange these compositions to produce different figures. The first step was to layer the figures uh, onto the RGB grid of images. This grid allows for a series of layers to merge and produce a single tapestry. The big picture of Picture Park ends up, end up being an abstraction of patterns and radial shapes. The image plays upon the real and artificiality of floral fields. Here, the floral field grid is broken up and integrated with the actual green landscape. The grid extrudes vertically, allowing the platform for platforms and hedges, and could easily be blanketed on other green landscapes. The only spe specifications we provided were an installation chart, a sample axon showing how the tiles came together, and over 700 individual PDF files to be printed on exterior grade ceramic tiles. Each tile is numbered, and my, much like an, the identification of Pantone color chips, each tile's combination of colors and graphic is autonomous and ready-made. The printing method allows for this mass customization of individualized materials. Similarly, we're looking at printing on ceramic tiles for a current commission to design a swimming pool here in California. My, much like in uh, the Te Chengdu project, the coloration explores light emitting colors and is made out of a combination of custom cut tiles and square tiles. Here, instead of a grid, we use the tiles to recontour the outline of the pool. These are, such, these are early, this is an ongoing project, so these are just some earlier uh, images. Here you can see an example of the custom ceramic tile and the test on the dif different uh, color printings for those tiles. Um, similar to the Chengdu project, um, but earlier we did uh, another competition for an urban project to come up with an urban design for Highway 280 in San Francisco, which was to be demolished. Our proposal is in the form of ascending and descending platforms, pedestrian platforms, leading to a farm-like landscape within a mix of patterns. The project utilizes a patchwork of programmatic variations with architectural specificity through the definition of edges. The formal and spatial qualities of freeways determine the curving geometries of the interconnecting platforms. These walkways are at times elevated as they turn, split off, loop around, and ramp down in controlled radii and slopes. Filled within each of the six parcels and on the, on the platforms is a mosaic layout of urban patios 
and landscapes. Each is identified by a pattern, which is derived from small-scale ceramic tile configurations on patio flooring. The patterns are enlarged and scaled up to an urban scale and extruded three-dimensionally, creating demarcations, edges, and shapes for the park. The manifestation of these patterns are primarily um, programmatic, which includes fruit orchard trees, um, vegetable gardens, farmers markets, playgrounds, and temporary exhibit spaces. The extrusion of the freeway curve geometry produces a thickened mat, um, which is in memory of the freeway, but at the same time creating a new sort of 2.5D um, formal um, articulation of the space. As the entire park is considered public, the variation in shapes made of greenery as well as boundaries and hard edges produces areas of privacy and areas of discovery. The next project uh, was a proposal that we work on um, in 2012. Uh, we were invited to participate in Maribor's City of Culture events to propose a project for the city of Maribor. We were asked to select a site from several, several options that were given, and we chose an industrial site that is just adjacent to the old city of Maribor al along the Drava River. Uh, this project uh, was a, it's a proposal, an ideas proposal, uh, but it was also exhibited at the Venice Biennale, so it, it would kind of build up a series of images and examples, you might see uh, uh, several architects that created proposals throughout the city. Um, it was mostly uh, a way to, to present Maribor uh, to the world. As seen in these photos, the roof of the old town created a topography of ceramic tiles. The design proposal intended to expand the artificial topography of the existing roofs. The roof of the am amazed buildings are a layer of colored ceramic tiles where each tile is a pixel, completing a geological satellite images of the existing Maribor landscape. As you can see in this, on this slide, the geological satellite image is abstracted through graphic filters to create, a pixel, to create pixelated images as a way to break down the image into single forms and single components. The formal operations of the housing elements departed from an investigation of pitch roof types. Primitive forms such as the gable, gambrel, salt box, M roof, and M salt box, <laughs> box roof were manipulated and abstracted. The idea is that the given forms of the pitch rooftops are used to embed the projects with an architectural familiarity, which is playful instead of indexical. In order to create unique blocks, where every block is different, but part of a lar larger aggregation, primitive roof types were reshaped and merged and morphed into one another to create a new family of contemporary forms. Each building's unique form aligns to the geometry of the adjacent buildings, or is incongruently misaligned. These conditions create unexpected courtyards and open spaces to allow light and air through the buildings. The delineation of the roof falls to the vertical surfaces, creating roof as chunks rather than mere surfaces. The cartoonish delineation of the window and the half-tone half pattern are used as a way to embed the projects with a drawing outline. So in this next project, um, this is also a competition entry where we looked at applying the ideas of figural shapes to a much larger scale project. Um, the project, I think, was uh, ultimately won by Sana. As part of a larger city development, the site was located at the northern end of Taichung Gateway Park, a large urban green space. There was a previous competition which was won by Fuji Su Fujimoto 
for a viewing tower to overlook the city, the Gateway Park, and the new cultural center. There were two components of the brief that we wanted to directly address. One, to be an entry or gateway into the urban park and to house two cultural programs in one building. Again, as in Maribor, we started by looking at familiar references, in this case, the archway or gateway. By recontouring the arch typologies, a series of manip manipulations were made to generate a three-dimensional form. Several iterations going back and forth between the 2D sections and 3D volumes were looked at to allow for the museum and the library to coexist under one roof. This drawing exercise produced geometries which could be, which could be merged to and from to form a large underpass under the entire building, which would lead to the ur urban park. The overall volume is truncated on three sides, producing three figural elevations of the project. A single flat facade along Park Avenue represents the building as a solitary cultural hub. And the two flat facades, facades which face the park define the museum and library as separate entities. Above the large gateway is the main level for both the museum and the library. So in the plan, you can see on the left is the museum, on the right is the library, and the brief called for these two programs to sort of coexist under one roof, but be very separate at the same time. We wanted to make the roof the primary source of visual impact for the building, as it could be viewed from the viewing tower across the park. So we developed a graphic floral image, which abstracts the national Taiwanese flower image into individual panels to cl clad the undulating roof. The roof envelope and the flat facades for us is this 2.5D condition, um, where it's an instance in the process where, where we're fluctuating between 2D uh, figures and 3D form. And this is an image of the gateway um, or the underpass that happens underneath um, the large mass along the street. So, um, so we were one of the finalists for the last MoMA PS1 competition, and we presented our project back in January. Um, there was an emphasis in this year's requirements to try and stay within the given budget of $100,000 without obtaining a disproportionate amount of sponsorships, which happened last year. Um, there's also, there was also an emphasis to implement a sustainable project, build it in five weeks, and d dismantle it in one week. Uh, when we went to go visit the site, um, there was a Mike Kelly exhibition, and it was also the season of parades. Um, and we were really identifying with this in our own work such as the features of graphics, color, form, figuration, and character, there was a multiplicity of elements that we thought that we could implement into this project. Also, we were interested in the scale of the balloons as they work with the city and at the building scale. Um, one of the things that this installation needed to do was to accommodate 5,000 people every weekend during the summer for three months because MoMA PS1 hosts a DJ music series in the summer. So we developed our own balloon form, which was then sliced into two directions, giving us a skeletal framework of a 3D form. As a running theme in some of our other work, the idea of caricature, mimicry, and illusion is created. The title balloon frame also refers to conventional two by four framing called balloon frame construction. Framing can be put together and lifted into place. Um, 
in the 19th century, they called it balloon frame because in theory, this type of framing could be lifted into place with balloons. In the spirit of this type of construction, it suited our desire to build something tall, thin, flat, and easily that can be fabricated off-site and lifted into place and dismantled in a day. So through conversations with the structural engineer, we had to come up with a type of material that was sustainable but also easily erectable. And we found a honeycomb torsion panel that would be optimal for our design. This particular panel can be made in very long lengths, up to 30 feet. Um, and the tallest point of our project was about 30 feet anyway, so it worked for us. Um, this panel is also super durable, resistant to rot, which could be great for an out outdoor installation. And then we were also looking at uh, a way to apply our color and graphic. And we found that the vinyl that is used and put on buses is not only recyclable, but can be removed without much effort and without any residue. So this was ideal because most of the honeycomb panels could be reused by industries such as door manufacturers, furniture fabricators, and trade show contractors. The material could also be cut easily with the CNC router, which could give us high resolution of the curved geometries that we created. And the material is also super flat, allowing us to use, a recycle, to use the recyclable vinyl to apply color and the graphic texture. Because the balloons are inflate, in, inflated, they take on a certain posture, which is evident in their shadows. We were fascinated with the multiple visual sensations that you get from looking at parade balloons, such as their shadows and contours. Um, the unrecognizable quality of the shadows were particularly interesting to us. So we developed a catalog of curved geometries that had these character-like features. And a language of curves is then hybridized to create delineated contours. From there, we moved on to carving our interior spaces and voids on those planes. And then to bring architectural scale to the profile, we looked at the height of the wall where at PS1, the wall at PS1, and understood that the human scale in relation to the planes and began to see the potential of these frames as thresholds. The shadow of the balloons create 2D profiles that are at the scale of architectural elements such as large thresholds. At first, we looked at um, crisscrossing as a way to develop a column so that these panels could be freestanding. The crisscrossing allows for stability as well as implies a fuller form. And in the early study models, we looked at the graphic as being more independent of the shape and super flat. So the, the final graphic, uh, if the earlier ones were uh, more kind of contour patterns, the final graphics uh, is a rendering of the three-dimensional volumes where the planes were cut. So the idea was to create a sense of three-dimensional um, geometry onto a kind of system of very flat profiles. This uh, 3D form rendering reinforces that 3D dimensionality, which is uh, implied from the 2D cuts, giving you an immersion in the space. So as seen is this, in this, uh, this is uh, the study model that we did uh, for the presentation. And in a, a smaller scale, uh, we started to test how the vinyl would be laid onto the um, the flat material, and the crisscrossing would work as a, as with its structural, um, as a structure for the piece. The final framework is represented, uh, it's a representation of a jelly-like balloon sliced in two directions. There are 10 vertical planes which intersect each other. 
We also wanted the proposal to be viewable from uh, the sidewalk. Uh, so parts of the forms are kind of emerging on the side. Uh, the height, uh, at the highest point, it, it gets up to 30 feet. The final proposal represents current sensibilities in pop culture, street art, and multiple visual sensations at once. It's 2D, 3D, shadow, and color. Upon entrance, there's this is a reality of planes, and from this view, you get a sense of the overall form which the planes outline. For us, this project is a combination of the color forming ideas of the last few years, which embraces print and 2.5D. The next uh, is the video that somehow uh, expresses and uh, represents the whole process of this project. Also, we'd like to thank that many students that have helped us in this competition and through many projects through here, Sire. So, thank you for your support. Okay, thank you very much. That's thank it. You.